Good morning and welcome to St. David's on this glorious Wednesday morning. We are glad that you could be with us today in order to celebrate and rejoice our faith together as Christian followers of Jesus Christ. Our service this morning begins on page 230 of our book of alternative services. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Together we pray, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth, and ourselves in your image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works, and to serve you with reverence and thanksgiving. We ask these things through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us open our hearts and minds as we listen to the Holy Word of God. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we? that you complain against us. And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. For to me living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. 
and do not know which one I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and to be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy and faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting of Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege of not only believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them to his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, about three o'clock, he did the same, and about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what, I, what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I speak to you today in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Forgive me, but this morning I'd like to move away from preaching on the Gospel, which I normally do, and to talk specifically about this letter that we hear written by St. Paul to the Philippians. It's an interesting one in the sense that Paul is writing this letter during a period of imprisonment in which he is now sharing a number of things and most importantly, thanksgiving. He begins in verse 1 of chapter 1 saying that he is thankful to God for allowing him to go out and proclaim the word of Christ to all those who will receive it. And then 
in the verses that we hear in this particular section of the letter, verses 21 to 30, St. Paul urges the members of that Christian community to live their lives in a way in which they will proclaim the gifts of God to all those who will receive it, so that they may be examples of God's great grace in the world for all of those to see. And it's interesting that he says in this letter that whether he is with them to witness the great works that they do, the ways in which they proclaim their message to people that they encounter, or whether he hears about them and can't be with them in either way, he wants them to be to radiate the Spirit of Christ so that all may know that they are his disciples. I have probably uh, used this example, this story that I'm about to recount to you as an example of how thanksgiving leads a human being to live their life in a way in which they try and radiate the love of Christ. A few years ago, well, a number of years ago now, when I was still at Trinity College, I think I told you the story about a young lady who had uh, experienced uh, great violence uh, in her home life. And one day she picked up her children and decided to flee her then home and seek refuge at a neighbor's home. And when she arrived there, she was taken in by this uh, wonderful couple. And as such, she lived with them for uh, a year or so, during which time she labored on their farm, uh, providing them with assistance in working the fields of the farm in which she was at. And in return, she and her daughters were able to have a safe and wonderful place to live. She retold us that story, not that she had to, as we gathered many years later in school. And as she expressed the feelings that she encountered as a result of their generosity and kindness. She said that as a result of their warmth, their hospitality, and their Christian love for her, she truly felt the presence of Christ in her life and how it transformed her, not only that day or that period of time that she lived with them, but forever. And as a result of that, she decided that she would go and study scripture and the Bible more fully. So she went off to the University of Toronto and to Knox College and began her studies as a theological student within the Presbyterian College. She said that as she immersed herself more fully in scripture and in the teachings of Christ, she began to feel this radiating love for her and for all of humanity. And so she decided that she would go on to become a minister. And she felt it was most important for us uh, to know that she felt above all things a need to proclaim and tell her story to all those who would listen because in doing so, she felt that she was now sharing that love that she experienced full, uh, fully and firsthand with others. Her hope was that by introducing Christ to those that she encountered, they too would experience that overwhelming love and so would be led to a life of faith in which they could truly feel this profound love that God has for them. I would argue that each of us, in some way, has experienced that kind of love. In whatever moments in our lives, 
in whatever difficulties or joys that we experience, perhaps we have seen and witnessed firsthand the presence of Christ in our lives. And so, as St. Paul writes to the community of Christians, the Philippians in this letter, he too writes to us. He says to us now, since you have experienced the love of God, it is time that you go out, go out and proclaim it and show people what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be led by the Spirit so that others may know how deeply loved they are. As we go through our lives these days and witness the great struggles and perhaps atrocities around the world, perhaps we too must go forward and proclaim the peace and love of Christ to all those who will have it. Are we not as Christians obligated to do so? Are we not as Christians asked and called to be apostles of Christ, to be sent out into the world as shining examples of what that life could offer and love could offer to others? And if we are, then the question for us always remains, how do we do that? I invite you all to pick up the Bible this week, to read through the words of this letter to the Philippians that Paul and Timothy write, and then to consider for yourselves, how can I go out and proclaim Christ to all those who need in my workplace, in my families, in my faith communities, and everywhere? Sometimes we lose sight of the fact that we have an obligation in our faith to do just that. And as you consider it, I pray that God gives you the strength and the ability to go forward with honesty, with sincerity, and with an open heart to share that which you already know, that God is with you, that God loves you, and that God's love is undeniably present here and forever. Amen.
And now, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, would you please join me as together we confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and descended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us offer up our prayers and petitions to Almighty God. Let us join in the prayers of the people. Let our prayers give voice to the needs of the whole creation that waits with eager longing for God's word to accomplish its purpose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray that the church, like the sower in the parable, not judge the soil or measure the seed, but trust God to ensure a bountiful yield. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our Bishop Susan, our Primate Linda, and a metropolitan Anne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray that nations free of political re repression may resist the lure of wealth and seek instead the glorious freedom of the children of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray that those enduring persecution for the word of God may be rooted deeply in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray that our parish may generously sow seeds of justice without counting or estimating the yield. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray that the word sown among us accomplish its purpose, yielding fruit a hundredfold in our lives of worship and witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray that our faithful departed, who we keep in our hearts, may rejoice to become the first fruits of the new creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. And now, as our Savior taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and that of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may it rest upon you this day and always. Amen. Once again, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Thank you for joining us for this time of worship together. As I say each and every week, may God bless you, keep you safe.
And may you always know how deeply, deeply loved you are.